Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Ari Witten and this is the Energy Blueprint Podcast. And today I have with me the founders, creators of E3 Energy Evolved, Heather Dubay, hopefully I pronounced that right, <laughs> and Damien Dubay. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Ari. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. So I, I would love to get started by just having you guys talk a bit about your stories and um, your, I guess your individual stories, your combined story and the story of E3 Energy Evolved. Yeah. You said you had a hard stop at what time? <laughs> <laughs> at 4.30. <at> 4 <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of one story really, right? It's, um, you know, we, we, like you, we had a long passion and background in commitment to fitness. Um, that's how we met in our early uh, mid twenties. And um, I don't know if you know John Berardi, but he's also like a really close, they were training partners in college and like he was at our wedding. Like we've just had a long history with fitness and a love affair with, you know, fitness and exercise physiology is a form of expression and um, experiencing the human body, if you will. And so when we got married, um, which is an amazing time, but also a very stressful time. Sometimes it's an, a huge adjustment in your life. Um, we were going through just becoming new homeowners and we had a series of events that kind of happened at the time. It was our early thirties and um, just some different stressful events came up. His dad, unfortunately had a stage four cancer diagnosis and uh, you know, I, we just bought a home. I was going through a corporate buyout and my, intense marketing job and so you like just add it to the list that i we went through an irs audit and it was just kind of like boom 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 and also i didn't really feel great anymore um my commitment to fitness which was something i never struggled with the motivation for really backed off which was strange to me it didn't make sense um, i was trying to drive from the mind because the body couldn't do it anymore it had no gas left in the engine and, um, you know, went to a number of doctors, um, probably much, the story probably rings true for a lot of what you've been through. Went to a lot of doctors. We lived in Northern California at the time. Um, in our former or my before Hashi's life, I worked in um, nutrition marketing for an agency there. So we were in Sacramento. And, um, you know, I just, the doctors didn't have any answers. You know, it was kind of like, well, you just have allergies. You know, they read the thyroid lab wrong. The same thing that most people experience really. And so that went over two years. And um, fortunately what was going on internally worsened during that time. And um, it really was when we turned the corner and started to get more aware of energy like yourself and natural health. And, um, but really that this was a higher level conversation of energy in the human body, that everything started to click and make sense and shift for us. Um, what was kind of shocking is when we started to really get into natural medicine and means to work on my healing. Cause I really had full blown, um, Hashimoto's disease and chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, also, systemic candida and like a whole host of other things by that time because it was so advanced um it's just that there was a lot in the met and then the natural medicine world that was still um kind of missing some some best practices that we knew from the fitness world in nutrition and and these things on how we could speed up and optimize um change and transformation and and resting metabolism in the human body but also healing and so that was really our big aha moment um, and you guys, you know, I neglected to mention in the, the yeah. intro, you guys have a strong background both in, in fitness and in personal training. You have multiple correct. personal training certifications, yeah. uh, corrective yeah. exercise specialist. I see that on there. Uh, exercise physiology expertise and, yeah. um, and, and bodybuilding. Yeah, right? that's actually, so, so that's Damien's background. I'll let him share that. My undergrad is in psychology and I have some post-grad work in positive psychology Everything going from the neck up is always what's always fascinating to me, but that was something I used as an athlete, right? We use that when we're doing um, athletics, and I did some competitive athletics in terms of natural bodybuilding up to the national level um, in MPC, and then and Damon has as well, way back in the in the 90s, but I'll let him share now that I've taken up all his airspace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I saw that. There was a little like hesitation and spy, and he's like, oh, just another day in the life. <laughs> well, you're married, right? I, mean, <laughs> I get it. I get it. I have the same thing. <laughs> the way it is, right? We come to 
live with it. Um, I, I apologize. I keep looking now. We have two Jack Russells. Um, one just, of them's a puppy, and she keeps trying to engage to the other one. So. <laughs> I, I know the feel. I have my dog right next to me over here, and she's a whiny, whiny little creature as well. <laughs> We're not being uh, up here rude, but um, yeah. So you know, similarly to you, I have a, a um, uh, undergrad in exercise, exercise science, exercise physiology. Um, I did competitive bodybuilding in my early mid twenties. You know, um, back in the mid nineties, I'm dating myself a little bit. Um, left that industry just because I saw where it was going with the substance abuse you know I, I know a lot of people who went down that path i was into bodybuilding myself i was always tempted you know in, in my younger years oh there were several times where i came very close to doing some of this stuff researched it very heavily was very close looked at places to buy it and um you know my older brother talked me out of it fortunately but i know the temptation and i i've also seen a lot of close friends who um started to get into it and then once you start it's so hard to get out because you you just, you get addicted to it. It's kind of a bizarre scene in a way and what it's become because it was originally started, you know, the guys were, uh, you know, kind of doing these feats of strength and kind of displaying how healthy they were. And that, that was like the origins of it, like build yeah. some muscle, show off your strength um, and, and be healthy. Yeah. Be a picture of vitality and strength. And then it's, it's kind of morphed into this very weird subculture of like people really abusing their bodies and doing all kinds of things that are really not good for health at all and, yeah. and then like posing on stage and saying look how strong i am but they're like actually not at all the picture of health yeah well, and that was like 95 too i mean you were 95 96 with john no. and like Barty and like i think it was more like like i don't know i don't want to say i was expected to do it but it was like kind of like i think it's changed a lot you know, I mean, back in my early 20s, shoot, I, I was always natural, but like I was taking ephedra, like, like I thought it was like, no, oh, this is no, good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is healthy for me. I'll just take it before my workouts, you know, like, yeah. so like, I think it's changed a lot, really. Like, it's just like, to your point too, it's shifted so, so much. Like when I was first passionate about fitness was like 17 because I actually have a rare neurological condition, which is what first, first got me interested in fitness solely because at that time in college, I had always played sports. I had skied. I was like, you know, I'm a pit Ayurvedically, so I like the adrenaline junkie sports, you know? And then when I went to college, I lost that influence. And I was like, what am I going to do? And I just found myself in a gym. And I just knew that when I weight trained and I listened to music, that my neurological symptoms got better. So I didn't need to know why. I just kept doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then that's where, and that led to an interest in nutrition and, you know, so it just kind of rolls forward as you're finding ways to live in a healthy manner with your body. But, um, but definitely it's, you know, we're 44 and 45 now and it's, um, definitely just seen it change so much. The, the industry. I mean, when I was young like that, I idolized people like Monica Brandt, you know, I don't know if you know who that is. Yeah, like, I remember. Um, yeah, like that's when like figure to me was so different and woman's bodybuilding figure was so different than what it is now. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I, when I competed, um, when we met, it was just important to me to do it, to complete a goal. Do you know what I mean? It was like yeah. the end of a, that phase of my learning. I wanted to take it to a complete level, just the way I'm passionate about learning. And then when the learning is done, I move on to something else. So I competed natural, um, and I intentionally went back to compete after healing my Hashimoto's and chronic fatigue because I wanted to take what we did to heal me in terms of functional nutrition and apply that as an athlete to see what the difference would be as my own experiment, right? As our experiment together. And it was fascinating because, I mean, I was on stage at 6% body fat up against women from other countries in the U.S. that are using, and I'm there natural, and literally I had a period I wasn't wow. agitated. But on, like, I had while she was competing, complete control she was of my sense. mood. Wow. Um, could, you know, when I walked off stage, there was no zero metabolic backlash. Um, and literally, they, you and, know, they told me I was too lean. I was too conditioned. Yeah. <laughs> like, Babe like, too many natural. home runs should be in the Hall of Fame, yeah. right? <laughs> so yeah. It was more the point. Um, I think, <laughs> you know, going through an experience where, I mean, and you know someone who's been through chronic fatigue. It's, it's incredibly 
uh, spirit stealing. It's incredibly life stealing. Yeah. It was just there was a place to me at the bottom of that two years into that where literally I actually, and this is not me, began to question if this was all there was like, and for, for me to get to that place mentally with who I am and my passion for psychology and everything is a big deal. And when I knew I was like, there was just some line in me and I don't know if you had a similar experience where I was like, I just was like, it was like this Phoenix rising moment of like, I'm not going out like this. Like, this is not me. It was like an out of body experience. You know, you know, when you're an athlete and you have a commitment to fitness and you can't even do that, let alone contribute to your household, contribute to your marriage, you know, do your taxes, you're laid up on the couch and um, you can't go get groceries because it feel your legs feel like, you know, dead weights. Like it's just, um, it's just a very hard place to be yeah. um, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, not just physically. And um, so coming out of that, um, it was just, I was just, I mean, maybe pissed off is the wrong phrase, but I was, I was very angry for a long time at the doctors that made errors and missed this. Um, because we sacrificed a lot. We lost the phase of our life to have children and become parents. Mm -hmm. Like there's a bigger conversation going on that people aren't even tapping into because if you don't have enough energy to function, you sure can't as a woman have enough energy to produce another human life. Yeah. So there's only so many years you get to do that when you get married at 32, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I did really have a lot of um, just anger at, at the, that how could this be missed? You know, how, how could, because really all those misdiagnosis and mistreatment is actually what made me advance so um, dangerously ill. And it really could have been avoided. Um, but instead we channeled that. You know what I mean? I channeled that and just was like, I'm just like coming out like a, like, a, like a bat out of hell. And I wanted to go back to compete to show that not only could we heal this naturally when you, 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 and you said, no, it's not possible, but we can become our best out from the inside out, um, mm -hmm. you know, healed, but also in optimal conditioning, you know, externally. And that was just um, naturally and a point I wanted to make it didn't take synthroid it didn't take all these other things it really took optimizing function and energy in the body to do it and that can be done naturally yeah and so was it the health problems for you Heather that that prompted you to move in the direction of like kind of shifting out of the body composition focus more towards energy yes. and yeah. And I think, you know, in the sense that by the time I got sick, we were blessed that, I mean, you know, too, there's a lot of people in that industry still doing it wrong. There's, you know, we were, we were, we were blessed to, you know, Damien's very, um, Damien's very intuitive and always been naturally gifted with nutrients. Um, we had influences like a coach like John Berardi, who, I mean, if you could like land a coach in the industry and get a chance to mentor with. He's one of the best, um, you know, so we were still doing sports nutrition in a way that was, you know, not like we weren't like, you know, piling down pizzas on the weekend for a cheat meal. That just was never the way we were, you know, we had our own garden. We were, you know, living that way, but it was very much like there's shift of, wow, it's not just about this, like this thing that we'd always thought, like there's a whole other underworld going on in the body, the lymphatic system, the digestive system, like all these things that I had to really become more aware of how do I optimize those things so that my resting metabolism ultimately is functioning more properly for me. And that, and what was fascinating to us is like, and I'm sure you know too, is like, well, wow, all of a sudden, if you do this from the inside out, if you do this in a way that gets, where you really get on the team with your body, the way it wants to operate, the way that it knows to operate, it becomes easy. We don't have to force it as much. Mm -hmm. And so then we can like, you know, it's not, you know, you know, two hours, like killing yourself in the gym six days a week. It's not that, you know, or it, what you thought it was for all these decades, right? It's, it's actually easier. And, and there's nothing wrong with that if you still want that, but it's not necessary to get the body to respond and do what you want to do if you're healed internally first. And so that's what we became really passionate about that point is that really we have to put healing first. Yeah. And then the metabolism just comes along for the ride, really, because then you're optimizing the resting metabolism the other 23 hours a day, not just the one that you're in the gym. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Damien, what, what was it for you that trend, kind of transitioned you more towards general health? Uh, you know, I, I, I've always been 
you know, through, through high school, through college, um, always been into, you know, working out and, and, and health and, and not, you know, not doing a lot of the other things that everybody else was doing at the time, you know, um, I started into the bodybuilding, took a path for a short period of time, then realized it wasn't the right path, got back on track. Um, and really it's just been, um, common sense really, you know, and, and just understanding what the body is capable of on its, you know, if given the proper tools, you know, um, when Heather got sick, that shifted us to a completely different, different level. level, Yeah, you know, where, um, you know, you got to cut out all the, you know, the artificial sweeteners and, and things like that. Right. Which we would, would pound, right. Because it's in every protein powder, right. every workout drink and every, you know, uh, uh, beverage out there, you know, um, you know, so I, yeah, I, th I think that Heather, Heather getting, you know, going through what, what she went through definitely kind of shifted. And, and as, as she was shifting, I was making those shifts as well, you know, nutritionally. Um, and you know, my athlete's foot went away, my lactose intolerance went yeah. away. Um, you know, all these different things that you don't even expect everybody just assumes are kind of normal, you know, right. just went away. And then on top of that, staying in condition is, is actually easier, you know? So in my forties, I'm in better condition than I was in my, in my early to mid thirties. Yeah. You guys are really similar. To that. He like, I mean, he looks like he could walk on stage. Most of and, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but if we, we don't do it for that reason, you know what I mean? We're doing it cause we're honoring the body. And we're honoring right. Ourselves. Yeah. No, I saw, I saw, I don't know, Heather, were you at Mindshare? Yeah. You both were uh, a yeah. few years ago. And I remember seeing you, you're both definitely in great shape. So um, you, you walk the walk, which I appreciate. Thank you. And, 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 and likewise, we, we appreciate yeah. that you do as well. You know, it <laughs> kind of drives us a little batty when uh, people are, well, are so not. <laughs> yes, I, I totally agree. It's, it's bizarre to have a conversation with someone about health and they're clearly just not healthy. Right. Um, yeah. But uh, so, so tell me about the system that you guys have developed. E3 Energy Evolve. Kind of paint a picture for me of, uh, and for my audience, more importantly than me, um, of what the paradigm of health is what what is it what does it look like what do you guys see as the biggest um, roadblocks for people to be healthy or triggers of, yeah. of disease well it's <laughs> there's a lot but yeah no i think well there's definitely this um aha moment for me when i was coming out of the sickness and finally turned the corner where i could feel in my body that i was on the upward trajectory of like, okay, it's, you know, energy is more than just my nutrition and my fitness. It's if I'm really going to truly have a healing experience, I've got to consider that, okay, one, this is a bio-individual organism. Um, it is constantly responding to its environment all the time. Um, how it responds, it responds through what, how I perceive the stress response, right? So measure stress could be different perception for me as it is for him, as it is for you. Um, and just that there's our energy in, our energy out, and our energy environment. And there was just this aha moment. And that was really the birth of E3 Energy Evolve. It was like we're having a conversation about three levels of energy. And if we have an awareness about those levels of energy and what's entailed in each of those levels of energy, and then how to um, always just be mindful of them and manage them proactively, that we can not only heal our disease, but we can disease proof our lives. And, and that was such a huge pivotal shift for us in the way that we approach um, our bodies. And um, so that, and I'm also blessed with a husband um, that, you know, we have very similar values and he was, we were a team through that. Um, and I think that's a, that's a whole other conversation <laughs> for another, for another time. But essentially that was the birth of our system. It was kind of like, okay, we're really talking about energy and kind of helping people to understand that your energy in your energy environment and your energy, um, sorry, your energy in your energy out and your energy environment are really what's important. Um, and then there's having, obviously there's certain things underneath those. So your energy in obviously is your nutrition. We put it in a specific order because we think like athletes, athletes, when you're preparing for a competition, you always, you're going to work as much of the mental and physical and spiritual body as possible 
holistically to get the best outcomes. So we look at it the same way when we look at healing. Um, and why we do that in terms of the strategy is kind of, you know, certain things in energy actually get you more outcomes. So like the way we look at it philosophically is if you're not going to prioritize your nutrition, well, let's not really dive into essential oils because like, you know what I mean? Or let's not really dive into like what you're worrying about in your environment as much because that's really rounding out the last 10 to 20 percent so we really look at it as you know 70 percent of the equation when your body is in some form of chaos or it's departed from homeostasis and you're dealing you know with a fatigue issue a thyroid issue autoimmune it doesn't really matter mm -hmm. um, you're going to need to revamp that by recreating the human body through that energy in of what you put into the system to get so it to let's that. let's dig more into that so yeah. that the, the three levels of energy the three yeah. e's um, let's start with energy in. What yeah. is what does that entail? Give me kind of list out some of these energy in sure. factors. So energy in is uh, first of all, obviously your eating, right? nutrition. Yeah. Then it's also your nutraceuticals. So obviously we work in cl clinical grade nutraceuticals, where that became a big shift for us at that point in our lives, is in, in just terms of potency and efficacy. Um, what you're allowing into your mind is not often thought of, but is huge towards our stress. Also the way that your mindset is, you know, how do you perceive stress? There's those individual aspects of psychology that matter too. We can't discount everything from, all right, Uma, Uma wants to say hi, sorry. We can't discount everything from the neck up. You know what I mean? Even though we're talking about correcting the neck down, I like to say too, if you're not gonna deal with what's going on from the neck up that created what's going on from the neck down, then you're not gonna totally fix what's going on from the neck down. Um, but then other things, you know, spirituality, like what you're giving to your system to have what we call extreme peace or extreme rest. Um, those are important things. Sleep. Um, sleep. <laughs> Hydration. Um, is, is sleep put in the energy in category? Yeah. Because that helps okay. to kind of like replenish, mm -hmm. that, replenish right? yeah. Yeah. that bank account. That Whatever's going to yeah, build up yeah. the bank account. Um, when you get into energy out, we look at that as about 20% of the equation, and that's things like your exercise physiology, which is a form of stress on the human body, as we all know. And, um, you know, there's times when that stress, the benefits of that stress, um, the, sorry, the risks of that stress outweigh the benefits, depending on where you are on the spectrum of fatigue. And in our, at least that's our philosophy and position. Yeah. Um, and, and knowing how to adjust the approach to your exercise is truly important if your goal is to, in our experience, to course correct a fatigue condition. You have to consider that in the equation. Definitely. Um, you will absolutely get there faster should you do that. Um, it, it's really amazing. Uh, one, one of the things we love, and I don't know if you've experienced this too or similar with your clients, is when you just get somebody, we don't actually work specifically with athletes but every once in a while we'll get someone who's like a competitive crossfitter or something like that we actually I work with everyday people um but you get someone like that who's so conditioned to think they have to be just like crushing themselves you know to like get the outcome and you put them on what we call extreme rest and they're like and, and like literally they're you know pounds start flying off and they're like what what you know because their body's getting what they need to be nourished and it's getting to focus all that metabolic energy towards the healing process and yeah that, that was actually a big realization for me uh, many years ago when i was chronically overtraining. yeah uh, and i'm sure you guys probably went through phases like that but you know there were several years where i was just chronically tr over training two times a day in the gym uh you know two hour sessions seven days a week and it was a huge realization for me that I could actually get better results and feel a lot more energetic outside of the gym uh, by like taking a couple rest days here and there and like maybe having some days where you only work out once. And yeah. you know, that, at that time, as, as you know, weird as this might sound to some people, this was like a huge shift for me. You know, and not to take a sidebar on that, but we, we used to, although we don't right now because we haven't had as much time, we used to write for a publication called On Fitness. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they, they're really great in the industry in terms of, you know, they bring in like functional nutritionists and, and high level competitive athletes, but all, like chiropractic doctors, all from a natural perspective. But who was that one bodybuilder that you used to really love that, that who's been around forever? Oh, Frank Zane. Frank Zane also wrote for them as well. And he mm -hmm. wrote a fantastic article about how your training should shift over your lifespan, that actually as we age, if you've been training consistently, you don't need to be 
training, like how's at basically how we change metabolically. You could, you could train less with less volume and less frequency and still yeah. be getting, you should be, um, actually he was recommending. I, I just thought it was a really fascinating article. Um, yeah. It's certainly been my experience and you know, my older brother's a, a chiropractor and was a personal trainer when he was young as well and bo into bodybuilding and definitely that's that been his experience as well. Yeah. 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 So, um, and then on the energy out, you know, obviously stress, it, you know, stress, stress management, but, but not to kind of like, you know, it's kind of become a mainstream term and we're talking about, um, deeper, level. deeper level of stress, really. It's not just like, oh yeah, okay. Like do a little meditation. We need to understand energy in the body and, and how things like our mind and, um, can truly affect the stress response in, in our trigger that in the body and reframing, um, how like our role as an advocate for the body, if you, if, that, if you will, like for me, I had huge shifts at that time. Um, it's hard because sometimes people, you know, email us and you kind of say, well, there's one thing you took or this or that. What's the one supplement? And it's just, it wasn't that simple. It was a broader thing where I had to really also look at how, how did I look at things in my life as an advocate for my body? Um, I never really saw myself as that before, even as an athlete. Like I had a deep, mind body connection um being an athlete but i never acknowledged a mind body and spirit and that they're they're always together and that ultimately um, i'm the advocate for my body so i'm the protector of that like i have to care for it i have to nourish it when i have needs i have to speak them out my mouth to get them met you know in my relationship all these things like i i shifted a lot in who i was and how i would show up and i'm a very intense driven. I think we all are right? <laughs> like, just when you have that in your background, I could be a really intense, driven, competitive. Like that's just like mm, part of my upbringing and how I was raised. We're both pit as Ayurvedically. If you know the different energy constitutions, it's just that type of personality. And I really had to look at, okay, here's this persona that brought a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, success into my life in different ways in my career and athletics, but it wasn't bringing success in my health. Right. And so I had to say, okay, how could I reframe this and come back at that? And how could I find more balance and when it's appropriate to show up that way? And when I have to ease back on the brakes, do you know what I mean? So that there's yeah. more balance in that constitution energetically in who mm -hmm. I am and how I show up as a protection for my body. And even sometimes that's as simple as like, okay, if things don't go the way you wanted that day, or if you're <clears throat> a little bit addicted to being a perfectionist, well, you know, really like having a better perspective in life. Like if, unless, you know, the roof is falling in or, or if you're dying, like it really doesn't matter. And really going through a near death experience like that, it completely changes you. It completely yeah. forever changes your perspective in that sense. And what really matters, and what really matters in life. And um, so I think there's all those things in that area of energy out. Um, what, what else is in this? What else falls into energy out? Are there anything else, uh, any other, triggers of, of the illness that are worth mentioning here you have any health issues so when we're talking about bio individualization you do have to consider if you have other health issues like so for me i've always had a neurological condition that onset is 17 it's very rare i've corrected it a lot over my life i live with very minimal symptoms and i've always lived drug free that was important to me i never wanted to take the medications that the doctors offered um, that was my first introduction to that world and i just never aligned with the medical system and just the thought process never even worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just considering like if you have other stressors on the body, like imbalances, those things do need to be considered, whether that's a specific system, does it affect a different, you know, a specific system, you know, that kind of thing. If you're on medications that you can't not take for a certain condition, whatever stress the liver like there's just those little things when you're thinking about individualization of other ways that the body may be taxed right energetically so mm -hmm. damien were you, were, you uh, were you about to jump in what's that damien were you about to jump in you look like you were getting ready to say something i think detoxification, detoxification as well you know so removing the toxins, eliminating methylating properly and so on and so forth Okay, Let, let's dig into that a bit more. Can you talk uh, about some of your strategies for, for how you, I mean, first of all, I guess diagnostics on that side of thing, how you go about identifying where, when a person is toxic and uh, what they're toxic in, and then, and then talk about detoxification strategies. 
Yeah, I think uh, I, I don't think it's uh, if a person is toxic. I think it's <laughs> the degree of toxicity that they yeah. that they have. Yeah. You, know, um, you know, what we have to realize is in the last 150 years, with what we've done to our our world, our food, you know, our thoughts, you know, all that stuff creates toxicity in in our bodies, and, and we all have a threshold. You know, so it's like I kind of equate it to a, a glass. You know, some people have an eight ounce glass, some people have a 16 ounce, some people have a full gallon glass. You know. Um, and as you're adding more toxins to that glass, at some point you're going to hit that threshold where it starts to spill over. And that's when really kind of when that disease state starts um, for the most part, you know. So, um, you know, as far as t uh, figuring out what people are, are toxic or how they're toxic, um, uh, I, I like to look at, you know, organic acids and things like that to kind of see some, some spill over there. Um, sometimes genetics comes into play, you know, if somebody's got different MTHFR snippets or, you know, CLMT snippets and, and things like that, um, it definitely, uh, uh, plays a mark, plays a part. A lot of it is just intuition, you know, just, you know, you're looking at the diagnostics and sometimes they, they don't make hundred percent on paper when you're looking at just strict science, you know, so you have to kind of just use your, your inner, your inner doctor, you know, your inner gut feeling and, and kind of say, Hey, you know, maybe we got to, we got to look at this and, and, and this might be the thing that we, we need to do, you know? Um, yeah. So is that kind of address? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, as far as actual detoxification strategies, do you guys have, uh, and, and obviously this differs by person, but um, do you have some kind of go-to methods or protocols that, that you use? And obviously you don't have to give away all your trade secrets, but do you, do you have some like kind of, specific strategies that you that you use yeah i think a lot of times um you know we we put people on a gentle detoxification program you know at the onset just to kind of help clear them a little bit um open up the, the, the door for for good things to happen you know um in my in my experience you got to kind of get the gallbladder and the, and the liver kind of commuting communicating together you know um because they're going to help each other in that process um, so I, I, you know, I, I start out by trying to kind of get them on the same page. Um, and then, you know, there, it, from there, it really depends on the, the, the individual, right? Because there could be so many different nutrients involved in, in detoxification and you could be fine with all of them except for one. And if you're deficient in glycine, you know, you're going to have some, some problems detoxifying chemicals, you know, or, or like the fume gives you a headache, you know, when, you, when you're when you exposed to it. Well, you, you know, there's a very good chance that you might be a little glycine deficient, you know, things like that. You know, um, you know and again, looking at the snippets, you know, and, and, and um, what we find in a lot, of, a lot of people that come to us is that they're very, very sensitive. So they're, they're either over-methylating or under-methylating. And some of them can't even deal with, a, you know, a, a B vitamin because it, it just pushes them so far over the edge. You know, so you really have to be careful and very gentle with the whole process, you know. Um, so, I mean, when we're talking about individualization, it really is truly an individual thing, right? And it's not only, um, uh, you know, releasing those toxins from the tissue and everything like that, but also removing them from the body. If you're not removing them and you're releasing them, you know, it's just going to create more havoc. Sometimes it becomes more dangerous than then, you know, the toxins sitting dormant in your tissue in, in the first place. You know, that's why a lot of these, you know, 10-day detox, 20, you know, 21-day detox, do my detox program, they're pretty harmful for a lot of people. Mm. And, and it kind of drives us a little insane watching these people push that kind of market marketing towards, towards a, a clientele that they don't even know well, about them. We're you know, big believers in bioindividualization in the sense that, you know, the, the like, we love the fastest path. Like that's just, you know, I think that comes from your, you know, our, our background in athletics too. Like if there's a fast path, you know, to get there, take the fastest path. That's the way we look at it. It's efficiency, you know? And so um, energy efficiency is, is one of our core values. And so, yeah, I mean, I think what we do when someone comes in is, you know, there's basic things that obviously are the generalized things that we would, you know, that people do to eliminate, to get out of their way. Um, but ultimately when we lab test, then we can identify what 
is a specific nutrition path, a nutraceutical path that they have to take. And to Damien's point, it looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, so he may have someone on like a, a, a detoxification thing while we're waiting for their labs to come back in. But once their labs are in, our goal is always to design the, you know, the program for them that's ultimately just completely designed for their individual you know, body and what their imbalances are that need to be corrected. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So, but but in terms of your question, like on detoxification from a nutrition perspective, we definitely say you know like the the big guns that you got to get out of the way, like dairy, sugar, artificial sweeteners. I mean, you know, anything that's ultimately gonna limit the systems yeah. from operating properly. I mean, go outside and pick your weeds rather than spray them. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then taking it outside of there, there's the other things that you can do, you know, for your body to help it. Um, Things like, um, you know, just making sure like lemon in your water, you know, doing body brushing, things that you can do from regular care to get the skin to, you know, turn over quicker, stuff like that, that also all help. Um, obviously, we can't, we're not doctors, we can't advise in the area of medication legally. All I'd love to say to somebody, <laughs> you know, unless this is absolutely necessary, get, you know, get off your birth control pill, get off, you know, there's all of that as well. But, um, you know, we can't make those calls legally for our clients. They ultimately mm -hmm. can educate them uh, so they're fully aware of all of the, you know, consequences, risks, and benefits, but they ultimately have to make you know, those decisions. Our goal is from a detoxification perspective is to help aid the liver to work as well it can to do its job as best as it can and, and get the things out of its way that are going to limit it from doing that. Mm -hmm. And and obviously eliminating, kind of cleaning up your environment, you know, picking yeah. your weed, yeah, just, that's the spraying, is, right. you know, cleaning up personal care products, um, you know, off-gassing of furniture in, in, in your home, you know, all that kind of stuff, um, filtering your water and so on. Um, as far as getting toxins, do you guys prefer a, a gentler approach to kind of like stimulating the liver pathway and as opposed to like more aggressive chelation to get heavy metals out and, and that sort of thing? You know, again, I think it's really dependent on the individual that's sitting in front of you, right? Um, I think as far as, you know, heavy metal chelation goes, um, the, the 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 typical people that are coming to us are, are pretty sick. They're really not feeling well, you know. And to start them off with with chelating some of those metals, uh, that's going to make them feel like completely. Uh, I'm going to try not to swear here, right? <laughs> but it's going to make them feel really really bad. <laughs> and, and and then they'll probably not continue, right? So there is a there. I do kind of believe in more of a gentle approach in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, um, because, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to just release these things all at once. You, you want to do it slowly because, it, you know, if you're releasing them, but you're not removing them, like I said before, bad things are going to happen, you mm -hmm. know? So let's do it gently. Let's do it slowly. You know, um, make sure the pathways are all working properly. You know, you might feel a little crummy, you know, as you're going through the process, but if you feel like complete crap, well, then that's a little bit too much, you know? Yeah. Um, Sorry. I knew it was going to come out once. Yeah. <laughs> now, you, you guys are also big into identifying food intolerances. Is that right? I, I read some stuff on your site about that. Um, do you have, do you find that to be a big factor that hinders people's health? And uh, do you have specific ways that like preferred ways of identifying and uh, correcting those food intolerances? Yeah, you know, we run labs, you know, um, we're not looking necessarily at IgG or, or anything like that. We're looking at the inflammatory response after the food's been introduced. So it's a little bit different than, than you know, a lot of the um, food sensitivity like food food intolerance tests that, that people are getting done. Which, which lab is that? Which, which one are you referring to? It's not IgE. It's... No, it's not looking at any of the immunoglobulins. It's looking at the mediator release response. Okay. What, what, is it measuring cytokines or like IL-6 or something like that? Uh, it's been a while since I actually look, looked at what it's actually measuring. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't remember, to be honest with you. you know, I, I, I've, I've seen people talk about it as being, you know, just like the rest. I, you know, I, you can't argue results, mm. right? Um, so if somebody's arguing that it's not really that efficate and, and uh, they're not really getting results anyway, but we're arguing that it is pretty complete and we're getting tremendous results. 
well then, you know, there's your proof. Mm -hmm. You know, um, is it the only thing? No, but you know what, when somebody removes some of those foods and they lose uh, five or 10 pounds right off the bat, well, there's a, there's a lot of inflammation that's, that's going down already and their, their headaches are going away. And, you know, their digestion's getting better before doing anything else. But that's, that's, you know, that's, that's enough proof for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm curious, do you guys find any particular patterns that emerge like any specific foods that tend to be common or is it really like you get very different results with no, each? Really, what I find a lot is it's the foods that you really gravitate towards are the foods that are the biggest offenders. Mm. You know, um, somebody's, somebody's eating a ton of avocados and a ton of turkey and eggs and, you know, you'll probably see avocados, turkey and eggs on there. You know, mm. it's obviously the foods you're craving the most, you know, because you're, you're, your body's just, just, you know, kind of going through that, that withdrawal type phase, so to speak, you know, where it's saying, I, I want this. But you know, there's still others that crappy. you would never know. And then there's, there's some that we never even know. know. Like we just ran mine recently just because like I, I, we, I always want to do a pulse and like, you know, take a little break and, and, and cause we all have a lot of stress with the work that we all do. Right. So like now this is just a kind of way that we live. Right. So I do a check in every once in a while and run labs on myself and, yeah, there, there were definitely some on there that like I, I have a lot. And then there were others that like I would, I feel like I'd never have. And I'm just like, why is that on there? Yeah, sometimes but there is no rhyme or reason. Yeah. But I will say that 100% of the time when I'm sitting with, with, <clears throat> with our client going over their results and they're like, oh, that sucks. I love that. Or that, I eat that. It's a staple in my diet, you know. Oh, sorry. We gotta we gotta remove it temporarily. And it's know? it's really weird. Some of the weirdest. I remember one client, one of the weirdest ones we had. Like she was. It also goes through the foods that you know you want to lean towards that are permissible, and, and it was like, geez, I think what oh, it, back it, is, it yeah, was like, it was just like steak and the, like, there was actually some dairy on it, but we wouldn't go to dairy anyway. But it was. But you know, I, I think part of the problem is that you know we're we're talking about removing removing the food. So if you have a bunch of sensitivities, it's an indication that you got some over permeability of the GI tract, right? So yeah, we need to remove those those offensive foods temporarily potentially long term but you know at the very minimum temporarily but if we're not focusing on restoring that integrity of the the gi tract then it doesn't matter mm -hmm. so you, you have to do everything together and if you're trying to restore the integrity of the gi tract but you're not removing offensive foods well that's not going to work either mm -hmm. yeah. um on that note uh, so i'm trying to decide now whether I want to go more into restoring the integrity of the gut or uh, the other option would be to cover the last E of the system, the energy environment, which I, maybe we've touched on a little bit, but. We kind of have, I think, I mean, really like we talked about, that's more just under, and I, I could do that in like two seconds. So that's more just understanding, right? Your environment, right? So like for me, when I was sick, I lived in Sacramento. Okay. Biggest farming area of the entire nation. So I had to consider that the level of toxicity that my body was exposed to was much higher than if I had lived somewhere else where there was no farming. So it's like having a broader awareness of what is this bioorganism exposed to in your lifestyle, in the way that you live. And then you have to offset that in order to get balance effectively in whatever you do from your programming perspective, from your, you know, for detoxification purposes, that kind of thing. So, um, and we try, you know, people can get a little, like, I feel like honestly, we, I was sick a decade ago and there's still some things that we're changing over, right? Like we're still looking at now buying an organic mattress. Like, so you can't take it all on at once. Like you can't, or it could be overwhelming. And, and I think people can make the mistake of thinking like, I need to do all this stuff. It's really Really a gradual process that you can ease into and that last part is really 10% of the equation to us so it should be a process you're working gradually you know um, but, but simple so. things like you know removing the cell from from your bedroom right. when you're sleeping yeah. you know that, that's so endocrine disruptors loss, right? stuff like that like um, and things that affect detoxification and, and endocrine disruption in your environment um, you know and one other core piece that we didn't really touch on on um, you know, your energy, um, well, in that area actually is, um, the beauty products. I mean, I could go on for days of that. I was shocked, just shocked at what I was like slathering all over my thyroid, like chlorine and my stuff on my face. And it's just like, you know, it, you, it's just shocking when you start looking at people are much more aware of it now, I think, because well, there's, I, I, I mean, definitely in health conscious circles, that's yeah. true. People are becoming aware that there's, you know, stuff, the hormone disruptors, heavy metals, all kinds of stuff. But 
I mean, there is a, a shocking level of ignorance in the general public about yes. like the fact that there's lead in most common lipsticks and like perfumes and colognes disrupt hormones. And I mean, just people are absolutely clueless. And what's amazing is that the body talks to you so much louder when you start taking that off and away and like allowing your body to be freed up and creating the space in your body and not being, you know, just pummeled with all this stuff. Yeah. When you come in contact with it, you're like the level of sensitivity goes up exponentially. I'm, I'm sure you can see like, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, we all, we all talk about it, right? Everybody who's like a health geek like us, you walk by somebody who's slathered in perfume or cologne or like whatever their shampoos are. And you can just, yeah. you smell the toxicity and you're like, how is somebody wearing that mm -hmm. stuff all the time? Or, yeah. or, or, or you go to, you know, Macy's and you I get can't. assaulted by that I can't. person like, spraying. I yeah. won't even walk into a place like that anymore. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, so just those things, that awareness of, you know, and even like EPA is a great resource for that. that um, you can mm -hmm. have the one site that, you, that measures, you know, um, and properties of makeup and stuff like you know, that. You even have to be careful with some of those quote unquote natural products too, yeah. right? I mean, you look at a lot of the natural makeups that are mineral based, right? And well, lead is a mineral. Mercury is a, technically a mineral, right? I mean, um, comes from the earth. Uh, yeah, there's, there's lead and mercury in a lot of them too, you know? among other things, cadmium, so on and so forth. And I'll be honest, like this is the only time I wear makeup. To, like that was a conscious choice for me. Like when I was sick, I had to actually remove, like I was so advanced that it was like, it was like everything was game on. Like everything had to be out of the way. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't wear makeup for a while and I got really used to it. And I was kind of like, why do we need this? Like, what's the, con like, I don't know what the conscious need is for that anyway. Because right. honestly, if you're getting out there and you're getting this, the natural sun and the vitamin D that you really need to be healthy, you know, your skin gets so much healthier when you do these things, you don't really need to cover it up anyway. Yeah. So, um, and I'm actually more comfortable not wearing makeup than I am now today. <laughs> Believe Me <or> too. Not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I have like, I can swing like five more minutes maybe. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering if we can wrap up with maybe your top two, top three, like strategies for, for health or, or tips for people looking to improve their health. Um, are we talking to somebody who's just getting started or they're like already in the, in the process? Let's say I, somebody who's already in the process. Yeah. They're already in the conversation. Obviously the awareness that they're, if they're, if they're in your, in your world. So, okay. Uh, I know definitely you're going to say sleep, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, sleep is always my, my top one, right? Make sure. Way to, way to ruin the surprise, Heather. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know. Regulation, um, the hours. <laughs> more specifically. Yeah, that, like, you know, the, the, the hours of sleep you get before 10, 10 p.m. are much more, or between 10 and midnight are much more <clears throat> uh, effective than the hours after midnight, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to bed at midnight, you're losing a lot of that restorative sleep. So. Eight hours of sleep between ten or between midnight and eight a.m. is not nearly the same as eight hours of sleep between nine thirty and, and four thirty, you know, or mm -hmm. whatever it is, four five thirty, you know. Um, so getting to bed at, at a reasonable hour consistently, right, and even on the weekends, you know, make sure you get into bed by ten o'clock um, uh, is a must. Yeah, I would nice. say. Um, sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say, um, and this may be, I don't know if this is basic in this crowd, but the, the consistency. So um, when we're talking about energy, you know, you can have the same amount of, you know, nutrients in the day in, in one sitting and, and take all those and have it at the same time and, and, and but spread them out consistently and you're going to have a completely different experience of your body. So consistency, like just that consistency of, of, of energetic input of your, your meals, that's huge. And also always having um, balance. So protein, carbohydrates, and fats at every meal is technically a complete meal. And, and, and the way that we really optimally consume nutrients, right? So um, I, I think people undervalue those things a lot. Um, and hydration. Like there was a shift in me when I went from, okay, I hydrate because I want to be lean because I was, you know, all in that world of sports mm -hmm. nutrition and being Drink three gallons a day. <laughs> no, it, like when, when, when I shifted to hydration from a perspective of healing, I need to hydrate to heal. Like 
I just think um, hydration is just really undervalued. People don't understand how important water is in the human body and having not only clean water, like you mentioned, filtered water, but um, helping your pH by having lemon in it is amazing. But even thinking about it as a process of flushing the body, that was like a mental shift that I had that really helped me drink as much as I needed to when I was sick. And I was like, okay, I, I was, my goal was healing was this isn't just, you know, you don't wait until you're thirsty. You are literally flushing the body all the time. Mm -hmm. and that's the way when I made that shift mentally, it really helped me never forget to grab the water. And I know, you know, you see athletes do tricks. They put their time on their bottle and all this thing. There's lots of great ways to do that, to remind yourself to drink water. But when I switched from, okay, I'm, I'm doing this because, you know, I, I need to drink it or to get lean, but to, I literally need to flush the body because I'm eating it to detoxify. That was like a shift for me where I was just like, okay, always on the water. I get two more really quick ones for you. Yeah. Digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. People are not digesting appropriately, right? Whether it's because they got heavy metals in their body, which will then, you know, impede that digestion um, or they're, they're just not producing the enzymes appropriately. You know, you're not digesting you're not assimilating, you're not absorbing, and you know all those nutrients are necessary for everything, right? For detoxification, for, for neurotransmitter production, and so on and so forth. So um, my opinion, most important thing is, is taking some digestive enzymes um, with your meals. The other, the other thing too is, um, from, from a mindset perspective, um, speaking your truth, right? Asking for what you want. Um, not hiding behind everything, right? I think the biggest, one of the biggest problems in our society is that people are hiding behind their computer, hiding behind Facebook. They can't, they can't be true anymore, you know? And I think that that's creating a lot of in, in, internal turmoil as well, you know? Um, yeah. Asking for what you want. If you're in a career that, that doesn't suit you, change careers. Yeah. You know, if you're complaining about your, your job yeah. or your boss, will do something about it, either have a conversation or, or change it, you know, only you can do that. Um, and you know, if you don't, then, you know, you can't, there's nobody else to blame but yourself. Yeah. <laughs> He's you just going to offload that. But, it, but it's true. It, I mean, it, you know. He's speaking his truth right now. As harsh, as harsh as that may sound, you know, and, and, and everybody's got a different path, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, beautiful. And, you know, it, it may be realistic, more realistic for some than others, but the reality is that it is realistic for more realistic, more realistic than you think. Mm -hmm. And we find this a lot with, with clients come to us, you know, a month into their program, they're, uh, they're changing their careers, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, the, you know, th th their decision or their boss's mm -hmm. decision, right? Either way, it was energy that was moving out, bad energy that was moving out. Mm -hmm. Things that were really, um, like now the thing that fascinates me a, dec a decade later is energy medicine. And that's an area that I've been studying like the last year and a half. And it's really cool to look back and see that things that I was doing intuitively when I was sick. Now I understand from an energy perspective that they were aiding my body to heal faster mm -hmm. because I chose to stay in an energy vibration of faith and gratitude and love, regardless of what the universe threw at us, mm -hmm. job losses, losing our house, going through a medical bankruptcy. It was like, okay, come on, bring it on universe. You got another one. Come on. You know, <laughs> but we always stayed committed to my healing and we yeah. never allowed us to get into that um like i i used to come at it more from a perspective of mindset because my background's in psychology and that's the way i see it but i'm starting to move more into it from a space of the neck down of like an energy vibration in the body and how that either aids to our healing or inhibits our healing so i think it's fascinating because we're starting to see that conversation start to really speed up and so you know when we work, Damien really digs on the science and we always deal with the measurable and that's important to us like you too. And, and we we're always shooting to get measurable outcomes for our clients. That's important to us. But we also deal with the immeasurable in the sense that like, okay, who is this person and how do they show up in their thinking and in their energy constitution and, and like Ayurvedically and then in terms of energy medicine and all that matters because you know, if someone, we could give someone all the tools, right? You nutritionally, like we could do all these things for healing and you can only get someone so far if they're going to stay in a really low energy vibration, right? If they're going to insist on being ungrateful, frustrated, you know, all like all that. Um, and what Damien's sharing too, is there's the vibrations of guilt and shame. 
and I'm sure you see this too, like this is very common in women that are going through chronic fatigue. They're just, for some reason, they're not speaking. And I was doing this. I was, I did the same thing in the beginning. I, did, I wasn't telling them I was sick. I didn't even know I was sick. I didn't even know what it was because it's so elusive, you know. But as I became more aware that I was sick, I was kind of trying to just, you know, muscle through it on my own or not really telling anyone like this was really going on for me. And this is a real problem with women that I, we see this time and again, where they're, they're not speaking up. They're not telling their spouse what they need. They're not saying, Hey, hun, something's wrong with me. And I don't know what it is, but maybe I need your help or support here. Like you don't have to take that on alone. And actually when you're doing that and you're, and you're staying in like guilt and shame for what you're going through, you're actually inhibiting you know, kind of closing the door that you want to open towards healing. Mm -hmm. And so that feels like a good last thing. From yeah. Me. Yeah. Beautiful place to finish. So um, if someone wants to work with you guys, where should they reach, reach out to you or get in contact with you or find out more about how to, uh, to work with you and what's involved? Yeah, they could, um, they could go to our website, e3energyevolve.com. Um, and then if they do forward slash gift or sorry, forward slash guide, it will take them to our, our free guide that kind of takes you through the three energy ball system. And it has some of his recipes that he really is amazing with and helped me a lot when I was working on my healing too, in terms of his gift with cooking, cause it's not me. <laughs> okay. And, and real quick for, for listeners, what, um, what would you say your ideal client is what what does that look like where do you guys feel you're at your best and the, the type of person that that you know you work best with in this conversation it's it's absolutely so it, it it doesn't matter what your experience in nutrition is it absolutely doesn't matter um, but usually the person that comes to us they have a passion for movement in some form it doesn't have to be any specific kind of movement and it's definitely not just weights. It's like maybe they, they liked to, you know, hike or exercise or whatever. Or yoga, or whatever. Or yoga. It doesn't really matter. Um, maybe they like to just get on a dirt bike and that fired them up as a woman and they like fly around on their dirt bike on the weekends. Like, you know, and, and, and they're, they're out, of, plane. out yeah. of place in their fatigue state where it's become a form of a purgatory in the sense that they can no longer experience their body um, in the way that they want to physically, they can't do those things anymore without backlash and they don't know how to get back there and get out of this grip of that, you know, fatigue. And so how do they get their, um, body replenished so that they can have that like full experience of life and joy and of their body again and do the things that really light them up, you know, without, you know, um, without, basically having that kind of backlash. And at the same time, I would say the second thing is they are, it's also important to them to get off medication. Mm -hmm. The type of person that comes to us is what we call a truth seeker. They've kind of exhausted, you know, the mainstream methods. They've excelled into maybe functional medicine or working with chiropractic doctors, um, but they haven't gone into or taken their nutrition to a bio-individualized level yet. Um, they're kind of still doing more generalized nutrition and um, so they believe in in that there's a way to heal and they believe that the truth of the human body is that it doesn't include medicine in most mm -hmm. cases beautiful well thank you guys so much it's been a pleasure doing this interview with you i wish we had more time to discuss i'm sure we could talk for several more hours mm -hmm. but uh once again it's e3energyevolve.com right yeah past tense with the b at the end yeah okay evolved uh, <laughs> Okay. Wonderful guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and it was an absolute pleasure. Thanks. All right. All right take care.